This is a video to give you some information about atomic emission and atomic absorption spectra. In this video, you will find out how atomic spectra are created and be able to describe the appearance of them. In a second video, we look in more detail at some of the features of atomic spectra and how to explain them. So here are the learning outcomes for this video. You'll be able to describe the appearance of atomic emission and atomic absorption spectra and explain how these spectra are formed by discussing electron energy levels and the way in which electrons move between them. OK, let's look at various kinds of spectra with which you need to be familiar. First of all, you will be most familiar at this stage with what is known as a continuous spectrum or a white light spectrum. This is produced by shining light from, say, a light bulb or even the sun through a prism and examining the light that is produced as a result. What you get is a whole sequence of colours from red through to violet, and therefore this is known as a continuous spectrum. A reminder that a spectrum is simply the word used to describe displaying a range of frequencies. Now, when you carried out flame tests on elements such as sodium and potassium in the laboratory, you would have been looking at the effect of heating atoms of an element and then passing the light that was formed through a prism and observing the different frequencies. And you would get a spectrum described as an emission spectrum, which takes the form of lines. These lines represent light of a very specific frequency. The important thing to notice is that the coloured lines are displayed on a black background. Third kind of spectrum that you should be familiar with is the absorption spectrum. These are harder to produce, but for example can be produced by taking white light from a light bulb and passing it through atoms, individual atoms, say of sodium or neon, and again looking at the light that passes through a prism. And here we see, again, lines in a spectrum, but this time dark lines on a coloured background. Indeed, the coloured background is actually identical to the continuous spectrum produced by the white light. The most important thing to notice, however, about the absorption spectrum is that if you are looking at the spectrum of an element, its emission and absorption spectrum will be identical in terms of the position of the lines. But of course, the actual appearance is the reverse. Coloured lines on a black background for emission spectra, black lines on a coloured background for absorption spectra. One of the things you are expected to know about atomic spectra is that different elements produce different atomic spectra. Indeed, the spectra of an individual element is unique to that element. Here we show you the atomic spectra of five familiar elements, sodium, hydrogen, calcium, magnesium and neon. We'll begin by looking at hydrogen, since this is the spectrum that is simplest and easiest to interpret, and also one that is most frequently asked by the examiners in exam questions. The hydrogen spectrum consists of a small number of lines, red, green, and then two lines in the blue end of the spectrum. As you can see, as you get towards the blue end of the spectrum, or the high frequency end of the spectrum, the lines get closer together. That pattern is observable with some difficulty in the spectra of other elements as well. However, the examiners would like you to be aware that that tendency is observed in many spectra, and so you should always describe spectra consisting of lines that converge together at a higher frequency. The other feature that can be seen in these spectra, although again it is hard in some cases to separate it from the information that is provided by all of the lines in the spectrum, is that the spectrum often consists of several groups of lines or sets of lines. As it happens, some of these sets of lines actually occur outside of the visible range of the spectrum. Hydrogen, for example, has several sets of lines, but one of them occurs in the infrared region, this end of the spectrum here, and several in the ultraviolet region of the spectrum. 
So what are the key features of atomic emission and atomic absorption spectra? Well, emission spectra consist of coloured lines on a black background. You'll be able to see several sets of lines in the spectrum of a given element. And in many cases, those lines become closer together at high frequencies. Absorption spectra have identical patterns of lines, but this time the lines are seen as black lines on a coloured background. OK, what we can do now is attempt to use the Bohr model of the atom to explain the formation of emission and absorption spectra. This animation illustrates it quite well. You can see here the classic Bohr model of an atom, the nucleus surrounded by electrons in a variety of orbits. And notice the yellow wave, which represents a photon, a packet of light, coming in from an external source. As that photon of light is absorbed, an electron is promoted or excited to a higher shell. As the electron falls down again from that higher shell, a photon of light is emitted. The important thing to notice is that the frequency of the light being released by the electron as it falls down is identical to that absorbed by the electron as it is excited to a higher shell. That animation gave you a good idea in terms of what was happening to the electrons in the atom. However, we need a slightly more sophisticated model in order to be able to explain all the features of the atomic emission and atomic absorption spectrum. This is the kind of diagram that you might be expected to produce in an examination answer discussing the formation of atomic spectra. It shows the orbits of the electrons displayed as energy levels. And we should aim to use that term rather than orbits or shells, if at all possible. And as you can see here, the energy levels gradually increase in energy, and that represents electrons that are further and further away from the nucleus. It's very important when you are drawing a diagram like this to show the label on the y-axis indicating that this is really a graph of the energy of the electron energy levels. Notice also the slightly odd way in which energy levels are labelled n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, and so on. A very important feature of electron energy levels is the way that as you get further and further away from the nucleus, the energy levels gradually get closer together. If you are drawing energy levels, it's very important to draw sufficient energy levels so that this pattern can be seen. What we'll do now is attempt to show, using this diagram, how emission and absorption spectra are produced. First of all, this pink blob represents an electron in a low energy level, the lowest of all the energy levels, often described as the ground state. If it absorbs energy, it can be promoted or excited to a higher energy level. Once the electron's in that higher energy level, it's possible for it to lose energy and to fall back to a lower energy level. That will cause the emission of the energy that it loses as light. So when emission spectra are produced, electrons are given energy by heating the atom. The electron is excited to a higher energy level and then as it drops back down to a lower energy level, light's emitted. So the key features of this model are that these electrons can exist in particular energy levels. And here's an important word for you. They're often described as quantized. That means a fixed amount of energy. Electrons can be excited to high energy levels. And then when they drop back down to lower energy levels, they release energy in the form of light. We'll now put that together and show how a complete spectrum can be produced. So the diagram on the left-hand side here shows electrons in a variety of excited states or high energy levels. Watch what happens as the electrons drop from high energy levels down to low energy levels. They're losing different amounts of energy. As they lose those different amounts of energy, you will see lines appearing on the emission spectrum in the top right hand corner here. Notice that each of the energy drops here corresponds to a particular line in the spectrum. 
you should be able to work out why it is that the large energy gap produces a line in the visible region that we describe as violet. I think about that and then pause the video while you think about it and we'll reveal why. Okay, well the reason is that high frequency radiation uh, occurs in the form of photons of light and each photon of light carries much more energy if it's at a high frequency than a low frequency. So the smaller energy gaps, say from n equals 2 to n equals 1, produce photons of a much lower energy and lower energy means low frequency and we see red light being produced. So here's the summary of what's happening in this particular spectrum when it's being produced. Excited electrons drop back down to lower energy levels. They release energy in the form of light or photons of light. This causes a line in the spectrum at a particular frequency. And that frequency is related to the energy that is lost by the electron. And here's a really, really important equation to remember. This should be quoted whenever you're giving a full answer in an exam question. That the change in energy of the electron is related to the frequency by the equation delta E equals HF, where H is a constant known as Planck's constant. Okay, so here is the final full explanation of atomic emission spectra, the kind of thing that you would want to put into an examination answer. Electrons exist in specific or quantized energy levels. You can excite electrons to high energy levels, and then when the electrons drop back down to lower energy levels, they release energy in the form of light. The light released causes a line in the spectrum at a particular frequency, and that frequency is related to the amount of energy lost by this vitally important equation, delta E equals HF. Notice that this, of course, is an explanation of atomic emission spectrum. Atomic absorption spectrum is the reverse, where electrons are excited to high energy levels by absorbing light. You might like to, after the video is finished, see if you can produce a description of how atomic absorption spectra are created. And in the next video, you'll see a little bit more detail about how some of the features of atomic spectra can be explained by this model.